<laughs> well, that's it. Two for two. Well, break two devices in one video. That's got to be a record. In this video, I'll be doing an unboxing setup and review of the Elipal Titan Mini, as well as having a look at how it compares to the original Elipal Titan. Uh, for those who don't know much about Elipal, they've actually been in the hardware wallet space for a while, you know, releasing the original Elipal back in 2018 and really doing something very different uh, at a time when most of the hardware wallets were both wired and dependent on a desktop PC. Elipal were doing something quite different, launching a hardware wallet that was based on QR codes so it could be air gapped and that was mobile first. While one of my gripes with devices like an Elipal is that they are closed source, the fact of the matter is they have now been in the space since 2018. So at this point they do have a decent track record and I'm keen to see what they have done with this new device. So let's get into it. And if you haven't already done so, hit subscribe and that way you can stay in the loop for content I make to help you find your way in the crazy and often hostile environment that is cryptocurrency. All right, so this is the box. Okay, so this is everything that comes in the box. We've got the uh, documentation, so we've got an instruction manual as well as our recovery seed sheets. Uh, we've actually got some accessories, in this case, uh, a micro SD card. It's great that they actually include that. This one here is a 16 gigabyte. Uh, the charging adapter, a USB-C cable, because the uh, Elipal Titan Mini now uses a USB-C plug, not just micro USB, as well as a little carry case. And then we have the actual uh, Elipal Titan Mini itself. And if we stick it side by side with the original Ellie Pal Titan, we can see that the Mini is uh, still a pretty large device compared to something like a Ledger, uh, but it is significantly smaller than the original Ellie Pal Titan, uh, which was pretty much similar size to a smartphone. It's also similar to the original in that it has the same sort of magnetic charging port that just sort of connects on there rather than a standard sort of USB port on the device itself. But before we do anything else, oh yeah. So I'm just gonna do this one on an iPhone that I've got here and we'll just put the overlay up so you get a better quality picture from the phone. So this is the companion app that we want. So let's just download that. Okay, so I've downloaded that on the phone and we'll open it up. And basically now we get to the step where we have to connect an Elipal cold wallet. So now we'll need to do some more setup on here before we can go any further on this mobile app. So let's just run through this like you had a brand new device. So we'll just say next. And we want to create an account. And we'll just say next and we'll set a password. This is a bit of a funny keyboard layout, but let's just go for it. Okay, we'll just say Segwit because it's 2022. Uh, won't worry about passphrase for now. Back up, please create backup. Keep in mind, once you should never get your access assets back. Yes, that's important. Mike's the only chance to back it up. Yep. These are all excellent warnings. Please back up the mic in a safe place without cameras. Very, very good. Back up now. Okay, so now we take one of the recovery sheets that came with it and we're going to transcribe these 12 words onto here. Okay, so we'll say next. Verify knowing. So what it's asking us to do here is to enter our seed in the correct order because you'll notice it's shuffled the words around here so we'll just enter the mnemonic in order as it is here and this is nice it's making us verify all 12 words all right so we want to select coins so we'll just enable everything yep and say okay and there we go so here is our demo wallet and we safely store this so what we're going to do now is we are going to say here that we want to connect the ellie pal cold wallet and then we're going to say connect to cold wallet it wants to access camera yes and what we're going to do over here is press this little chain button here and it's going to want to scan this qr code so you can see it's going to automatically scan each of these pages there we go and that is done so now we can just say back Okay, so what we have over here on the phone is now the same accounts that we have here on the Elipal. So if I go into Bitcoin and hit receive, we can see that I will get the same address here on the phone as I get on the Elipal. Being able to verify the receive address on the hardware wallet itself is important because if your system has malware or something like that, your screen on either your phone or your PC can lie to you. So let's just send some Bitcoin there. 
So those funds are on their way. You'll notice everything has just changed here in terms of the background. And this device here is actually running a much newer firmware. It's several months later now from when this was all originally shot. Uh, but the catch is that the original wallet that was generated on the original firmware that shipped on these can't actually be used to send funds. It'll just throw you all sorts of obscure errors. So you'll notice now we're using uh, Demo2 to uh, send some funds that I have just sent onto this wallet. So we'll demonstrate that process. Okay, there's Bitcoin there, so let's look at sending some funds. We'll click on BTC, we'll just say send, and look, we'll just put in my tip address. We'll just say max out. Now, this fee estimation here is totally nuts, especially given the current fee rate on the network. So let's just force that down to two and see how we go. All right. So there is the transaction. So what we're going to do now over here on the Elipal is we'll click on BTC. We'll say sign. Just put in the password. There we go. So we'll just scan that. So basically what we see over here is the same transaction that we expect and the right address. So I'll say OK. And now we just scan this. And there we go. Transaction sent. Let's just have a quick look around on the Elipal itself, as well as compare this to the Elipal Titan. There's really not much in the settings. Change the languages. We can see the firmware version and we can update the firmware. Okay, so let's just compare the two devices. So I've actually got the same wallet here now on the original Elipal Titan on the left and on the Mini on the right. We can see that if we go into hit receive on uh, Bitcoin, we get the same address on both. And that is what we would expect. And basically they're very similar. We can see that they support uh, pretty much the same coins, uh, pretty much even in the same order as they are between the two devices. Though you will notice that there are some coins that are not available on the uh, Mini at this time that are available on the Elipal Titan. And we can actually see that if we go to the coin list and we can actually see here that there are some coins that are available on the Elipal Titan but that are not available on the Mini. But honestly, if we have a look at what is not available on the Elipal Mini, I think mostly that's stuff that people aren't gonna care about in 2022 anyway. The only other interesting thing that I noticed is it does look like Cardano should be supported on both devices. But if I have a look on the uh, Elipal Mini itself, uh, Cardano is actually not there. Uh, there's just nothing between Ripple and Dodge on this device at all. Though so this did ship with uh, firmware 1.0. So let's see if this is something that's fixed through a firmware update. So when I actually recorded this back at the start of November, there was no new firmware update, but uh, we're at the end of November 2022 now, and that has changed. So let's uh, give this firmware update a go. So basically to do this, we are going to need the adapter that came with it because that actually has the uh, micro USB slot on it. And we're also going to use the 16 gigabyte micro SD card that came with it. You're also going to need a reader for this. So any standard USB one will do. So we're going to head over to the Elipal website, click on support and go to firmware update. Got the Elipal Titan mini and we have already generated a seed phrase. Now this is fascinating. Um, improved cold wallet, wallet security fix known issues. And th the thing with a device like this is it's all closed source. There's no real change log, so we don't actually know what happened. But clearly uh, the firmware that this Elipal Titan Mini shipped with was not really safe to use. But anyway, we'll update the firmware and we'll go from there. Okay, so we want the file. So we've clicked to download that file. And once it's downloaded, we will just shove the file onto the micro SD card. And basically we just follow these instructions. Okay, so we've got our memory card with the file on it. We've got the adapter. So step one is we're gonna turn this off. Power off. Okay, so we are going to put this micro SD card in the adapter. There we go. 
And once we've got the micro SD card in there, we just clip the device on there. The uh, magnets will hold it straight on, and because of the way the magnets are set up, uh, you actually can't connect it the wrong way at all. So that's pretty much idiot proof, which is great. And once we've done that, we will just connect it to power, and I'll just use a ledger cable, because I feel like being crazy like that. Okay, so from here, we're just gonna click on the little cog, go into update, and it's gonna check, there we go. So please ensure battery is 50% power, start update. So it did the update, and this has been sitting here for ages, and actually it looks like it's uh, stuck on a boot loop, so I'm pretty sure this has actually just bricked itself. Fortunately, I've actually got a second one of these, so what I'm gonna do is take this one out, download it all again, and try a second time. We'll see if we have more luck. <laughs> well, that's it. Two for two. Well, break two devices in one video. That's got to be a record. Okay, so it's actually now mid-January 2023. So this has been uh, dragging on for a while now. LEPAL were aware of these issues uh, with their previous devices and the firmware updates and have actually sent out a replacement device. So that is fantastic. All right, third time's a charm. Let's see how we go. Now, I'll just quickly point out, this is the standard edition of the LEPAL Mini. So it only comes with the charger and a USB cable. Okay, so let's have a look. So if we go into about, ah, okay. So this one has shipped with version 1.4 of the firmware, which is much newer than any of the other samples I had received. So the current version now is 3.0. So let's just follow these instructions. Okay. Go update, firmware update detected. Please ensure 50% power. It was basically full before. So let's say start update. Okay, here we go. Moment of truth. Okay, that turned off. Now the question is, will it start properly? Oh, holy crap. That actually worked. Unbelievable. All right, we're in business. So let's just see, oh yeah, great. So they've added a screen lock now. That wasn't there before. That was a major oversight. And let's see if we can add some more coins. No, we don't do that, sorry. Uh, we'll slide all the way to the end. There we go. So we'll just turn on things. Okay, so Cardano's there now. Oh, hang on, can I turn them all on all at once? rather than add them and enter the password a bunch of times. No. All right, it's been a long road, but finally it is summary time. And this has been a really interesting video to make for a couple of reasons. Firstly, the Elipal Titan Mini definitely is an improvement over the original Elipal Titan in that they are offering basically the same functionality with an entirely new form factor and a much lower price. While the interface looks very similar on the surface, it's obvious this has been a major refresh for both hardware and software, uh, exemplified by the fact that, you know, it's pretty much been re-implemented from the ground up. And that brings us to the launch of the Elipal Titan Mini, and we have to say that the launch of this product was extremely rocky. You know, there were features missing that were advertised as being there on the website when it first launched. that are only now started to appear after a few months. There were issues with firmware updates, breaking devices or not detecting the updates at all. You know, you could see all over the subreddit people were having issues. And there was also a issue where the device with its initial firmware was simply generating unsafe uh, seeds. It simply wasn't safe to use, you know, major issues with the device launch. And I think it's fair to say that anyone who had this device during the first three months of its launch from pretty much November 2022 to now was participating in an open beta project uh, without their knowledge or consent when they thought they had a final product, when they were actually storing their money and assets on this device. You know, that's not the thing where you want to be sort of secretly beta testing something for a company. And, you know, the question of whether uh, the software is now mature and tested and bug free, uh, you know, is ongoing. It's closed source, we don't know. So, you know, certainly something to be aware of with this device over the next few months. You know, it seems that most of the bugs have been ironed out, but 
you know, at this point, who knows? Um, just keep an eye on their subreddit. In the emails I exchanged with Ellie Pal, it was clear they knew that these issues existed and they were helpful in sending out replacement devices, both to me and to others who had these issues. The other thing that this really illustrates is the importance of having a hardware device from a vendor who follows standards. Even if you have an issue where your funds are sort of stuck and you're having issues with the hardware or the software and unable to send funds, you can simply import your BIP39 uh, recovery phrase into another wallet to regain access to the funds you know critically important and a fantastic illustration of why you want to stick with wallets that follow standards properly and honestly just don't touch anything that doesn't follow open standards especially if you're locked into using the wallet software from a specific vendor though let's be super clear that you should never need to do this during normal operation and to import the seed from your hard wallet into any software tool undermines the security of your wallet and is a very easy way to get scammed and to lose your funds. And in terms of how much trust you have to place in Elipal as an organization that has both closed source software and hardware and locks you into their wallet, uh, you know, the amount of trust you need is fairly high. However, it's also important to consider that the QR code format that they use to exchange data between the software wallet and the uh, hardware device is actually open and published. You can verify actually what data is going backwards and forwards and make sure that it's only what should be being shared, make sure that the hardware device is signing things correctly. And I cover how to do that in my previous video here on the early pal Titan. It is not for the faint of heart, you know, it's a very technical thing, uh, but it is helpful that you can do it. Likewise, if you're wanting to avoid placing trust in the entropy generation of this device, you can just generate your seed phrase using dice, or you could use something like the Elipal Joy product that I look at in this video over here. So overall, the Elipal devices have always been a really simple device for people who are, you know, very basic users who are happy to fully trust a company and just use this thing on their smartphone. And if you're someone who's wanting to do anything even remotely complicated with your Bitcoin wallet, you know, multiple accounts, multi-sig, signing messages, any of that sort of stuff, you know, really the Elipal is not for you. You know, it's a simple device uh, that you have to use with their software, their hardware, and if it doesn't do what you need, then tough luck. Uh, you know, simplicity is the name of the game in terms of what Elipal are offering. The main functionality that I find useful as a sort of more advanced user is the way that the Elipal devices allow you to import uh, raw single private keys. So if you're someone who has a bunch of old paper wallets for things like Bitcoin, Dogecoin, Litecoin or whatever, uh, the Elipal is still the only device on the market that allows you to import single private keys into the wallet and to then use them to be able to securely send and sweep those funds. You know, it's a much simpler process than sort of offline signing with Electrum that even non-technical users can manage very easily, even if they don't use the Elipal to store the funds long term. I've also added the Elipal Titan Mini onto my hardware wallet feature comparison. And if you wanna see a detailed breakdown of why different wallets get the scores they get, you can click through to the spreadsheet. And you can basically see a full breakdown of the score here in terms of all the functionality. And uh, again, makes it very obvious that the Elipal Titan Mini is pretty much a basic hardware wallet, which again, is perfectly fine if that's what you're looking for. If you think that the Elipal Titan Mini would be good to boost the security of your setup and want to support me in the process, I've got an affiliate link in the description. And again, thank you very much to Elipal for sending out these devices for the patient exchange back and forwards of emails. If you do have this device and have any experiences with it, any questions or whatever, you know, just leave a comment and I do my best to reply to everything. Thanks for watching. I hope that was helpful. Hit like if you think that other people would find this video useful and hit subscribe if you'd like to be kept in the loop about future content I make that helps people stay safe in the crypto space and to recover if they get into trouble. If you have any questions about this video or a topic that you'd like me to cover, just leave a reply.